to whether they should be included at all. This is very briefly. I, I, I want to return to something that the noble Lord, Lord Mann, raised earlier, which is I, I can understand in the broader sense why universities have been included, because very often it's been universities that have been at the cutting edge of popularising boycotts. And they've taken a wide range of forms, um, not just in terms of what's sold or what's invested in, but as um, the noble Lord, Lord Johnson pointed out, you know, it could be um, denying people research, not allowed to go, not, not letting uh, Israeli academics come over to speak or whatever. There's all sorts of ways that this has happened. So I understand why the university sector is in scope. My problem is that it's not clear to me how a bill like this can do anything other than attack academic freedom, which I'm interested in defending. And I think we have to deal with what's happening on university campuses in a different way. But regardless of that, the reason why it's frustrating, why I refer to what the noble Lord, Lord Mann said is, if you have a conversation with anyone outside of this chamber, they think this, or if they're like me, worried about BDS and anti-Semitic campaigns against um, Israeli academics. It's something's just happened at King's College London, in fact, uh, where an event has been called off. You know, there's a University of Leeds chaplain in hiding. You know, all of these things are going on. This bill, ironically, doesn't, if anything, this bill is too narrow to deal with what's really happening. The point that the noble Lord Mann made was that the way that wording happens, actually, there's ways around it that this bill won't deal with. He and I might then differ about how we would deal with it. I think we probably would. Um, but but non, nonetheless, I think what a public authority is, is it is understandable why you've got universities in here. But as people have said, which bit of the university would you do? And, to set, and for the minister to have said, oh, no, it wouldn't count student unions, would be utterly ludicrous. I mean, even if, from the government's point of view, even if I go with you, because why wouldn't it be the student unions? That would be mad, because they are part of what the public authority of the university uh, is about, and research council and everyone else. I'm not trying to encourage the government to wipe up every part of a university to make them in scope, but to keep saying they're not in scope makes no sense in the point of view of the public justification for this bill by Michael Gove when he's, just, when he's argued for it and anyone else who supports it. So we do need some clarity here. Point for clarification, sorry. But the other, the other important thing that happened at Warwick University was that Warwick University academics refused to actually sit on a panel discussing the issue of Israel and so on, it would not be affected by, and, and it was led by academics, it won't be affected by this bill. The minister can say, oh, well, that's okay, but it won't be affected by this bill. But that's actually had a much more damaging impact on the debate around Israel in Warwick University than anything that a few people at the student union did and that the university authorities didn't, didn't act upon. What the university didn't do was support those Jewish students and the organisation that organised that debate and let the academics carry on. So it's a question of what the bill will do, won't do, and who's going to be held responsible that we're trying to clarify at this committee stage.